In this video, I'll be giving a basic overview of raft polymerization, which is short for reversible addition, fragmentation, chain transfer polymerization. Raft is a type of reversible deactivation radical polymerization, or also considered a living slash controlled radical polymerization. Raft polymerization is a useful technique because it allows for more control over molecular weight, dispersity, and it allows for continued chain growth for either block copolymers or other architectures such as stars. The mechanism through which this occurs is through a degenerative transfer mechanism in which the radicals within the system are shared equally between growing chains. I'll talk more about how this occurs later in the video. The most important aspect of the raft technique is the raft agent, or chain transfer agent, which is often labeled as CTA for short. The raft agent is typically a thiocarbonyl thio compound. The raft agent consists of two important groups, the R group, which will end up initiating most of the polymer chains within the system, and then the Z group, which stabilizes the intermediate radical species. The raft agent essentially will distribute radicals amongst growing chains. Ideally, when you do a polymerization, you'll end up with a polymer that will be initiated by the R group, and then on the other end will be capped by the thiocarbonyl thio group. So you might ask, what are the components that are necessary for a raft polymerization? The first one you'll need is an initiator. The initiator will introduce radicals within the species and can be, depending on the conditions, any type, thermal, photo initiator. This is important because the raft agent itself doesn't generate radicals, but rather shares them amongst the growing chains. And generally, this initiator concentration will be fairly low because a lower concentration of radicals helps the polymerization be more li living by eliminating the chances of termination events to occur. The second important component of a raft polymerization is your raft agent. And the raft agent you choose will be based on the monomers in the system. For more activated monomers like methacrylates, you'll want to use a more activated raft agent. I'll put a link in the description to a paper that describes this in more detail. And obviously when you're doing a polymerization, you'll need a monomer to polymerize. And the great thing about raft is that a very wide variety of monomers are compatible as long as you use the right raft agent. The fourth and sometimes optional thing that can be part of the raft is a solvent. If you are using liquid monomers, it's possible to just polymerize in bulk but solvent can be helpful as it will slow down the polymerization rate. So now let's go through together and talk about the mechanism. First is the initiation step, where a small amount of initiator will generate some radical species, which will polymerize a small amount of monomer to create a few growing polymer chains. The next step is the raft pre-equilibrium step. So here, one of those initial polymer chains with an active radical species will react with the raft agent. So this radical will combine with an electron from this double bond and form the intermediate raft adduct. The polymer has bonded to the raft agent and formed a radical species. This is where the Z group is important to help stabilize this intermediate radical. What can happen next is this radical will combine from electron from the sulfur R group bond to form the thiocarbonyl again and then kick off the R group where now you have a raft agent with the, one of those initial polymer species, and then an R-group radical. 
which can go on to initiate and form new polymer chains. The next step is reinitiation, where the R group from the raft agent will initiate the growth of new polymer chains. And I want to reiterate, it's important that the initial initiator concentration is low so that most of the polymer chains that we generate in this process are initiated by an R group. The next and most major step of a raft polymerization is the raft main equilibrium step. Those initial first three steps take place rather quickly, whereas this is the main and the most important mechanism within the reaction. Growing polymer chains reversibly attach and detach from the chain transfer agent or raft agent. So as shown here, when polymer is not attached to the raft agent, it is free to undergo further polymerization with monomer to grow the polymer, but it can attach to the raft agent to form this intermediate radical species in which on either side of the raft agent are two dormant polymer chains. The polymer chain on the other side of the raft agent can detach and undergo further polymerization. This is the most important step because this is how the radicals are distributed relatively equally amongst the growing polymer chains which helps keep the size of the final polymer chains fairly uniform and also helps avoid premature termination. This process can continue indefinitely as long as there's monomer present to polymerize. However, there is the possibility of termination of occurring. Termination isn't when any two radicals combine to form a dormant species. So this can occur when initiator or R group radical growing polymer chain. If two growing polymer chains come into contact with another, it's possible for this proportionation or coupling to occur. This is more likely to happen when monomer conversion is high, as the growing polymer chain ends are more likely to come in contact with one another rather than a monomer species. The main product of a raft polymerization will be polymer chains will have an R end group and where the other will be a thiocarbonyl thio. And what's unique about raft polymerization is that the polymer can act as an R group in further polymerizations. So it's possible to do block copolymers this way by sequentially adding additional monomer. However, there are some side products when going through a raft polymer. Those side products will include some chains that are initiated by the initiator species, but will have the thiocarbonyl thio end group. There will also be some chains that will be initiated by the R group from the raft agent, but on the other end will possibly have like an R group or an N group that cannot undergo further chain extension. Overall, raft has a lot of pros going for it. It's a robust technique relative to other polymerization types. It's versatile as it works for a wide variety of monomers, useful for more complex architectures like block copolymers or stars. There are some cons though, as raft agents are often monomer specific and they do, being sulfur compounds, have some color and odor attributed to them. However, the color and odor can be eliminated through some post-polymerization modification. Overall, raft has shown to be an important polymerization technique that shows promise in a wide variety of applications. Below in the description, I'll put some links to papers that talk about raft and its applicability in more detail. Thanks for watching.